Good evening, I'm Peggy Scott Laborde, and welcome to Steppin' Out, spotlighting the New Orleans area's arts and entertainment scene. Seated at our table tonight, author Deborah Burst, here to discuss her new book, Louisiana Sacred Places. Hey, Deb, Hi. good to see you. Hello. Poppy Tooker, host of the WWNO radio program, Louisiana Eats. Hey, Miss Poppy. Hi, Peg. And we're so glad to see him back at our table, Rick Barton, author, UNO professor. He also founded the University of New Orleans Creative Writing Program. He has a brand new novel out, In the Wake of the Flagship. Hi. Hi, Peg. Good to Great see to be you. back. Good, good, good. And theater critic, Alan Mason, editor of the Crescent City Jewish News. Good to see you all. First up, Miss Puppy. First up, congratulations to Alan Shia. He is one of my favorite people as well as one of my favorite chefs. And this week, he won the James Beard Best Chef of the South Award. Big deal. And of course, that's Dominica and Shia. And if you haven't been to Shia, run. It's so delicious. <laughs> Go straight there. And then, you know, sometimes, we have to talk about the table we're dining on instead of what we're dining. And uh, the Furniture Bible, there's a gentleman, his name is Christophe Pourny, mm. and he is Martha Stewart's furniture whisperer. Everybody <laughs> with very high-end antiques on the East Coast, he maintains their furniture. And he's in town for a very, very rare special appearance. His book just came out, The Furniture Bible. It's everything you know to identify antiques, restore them, and care for them. And he's going to be tomorrow doing a demonstration and a book signing at the Gallia House from 2 until 4. And then tomorrow evening, there's the Magazine Street Champagne Stroll. And Christophe is going to be at Ball Zach Antiques from 6 to 7.30 tomorrow evening. So go meet him. Go talk to him. Oh, I interviewed him today. He's really something. Now, I'm wondering, is anybody who's watching, did you forget that Sunday's Mother's Day? <laughs> I know that sometimes things like Mother's Day and Valentine's sneak up on people. And of course, it's one of the very, very hardest times to ever get reservations. So I've got a couple of ideas about things where you don't need reservations that I think you could really have fun with mom doing. Continental Provisions in the French market. We haven't talked about this place before. It's a collaboration between St. James Cheese, Belgard Bakery, and Cleaver and Company. The food is exquisite, okay? There's the CP signature sandwich, salami, cotto, capricola, provolone, mixed greens, pickled red onion, herbed mayo on ciabatta. Mm. How about a classic grilled cheese with bacon? Doesn't that just look like sin? And the fromage fort, beautiful sandwich. The market veggie sandwich, it is delicious. And the salami and brie. So with those three provisioners at Continental Provisions, you are getting the finest quality ingredients. You couldn't get a better sandwich. And you can just sit there and drink wine and eat cheese if you'd like. Now, also, a great idea. If mom hasn't been to St. Rock Market, I know that's one of your new favorite places. I love it, love huh? it, yes. Well, I love it, too. And you can go there, no reservations. There's 13 different choices, all under that one roof. You can get crepes. Korean Louisiana fusion food, charcuterie, West African food, classic Creole, raw oysters, cakes, coffee. It's all there. 9 the a.m. to 11 mm -hmm. p.m. Yes. every day. Lots of time on, on Sunday to yeah. take mom over to the St. Rock Market. And then, is mom an art lover? One of my favorite places to go is Cafe Noma in the New Orleans Museum of Art. It is the most charming little cafe. Of course, it's one of Bra Ralph Brennan's operations, so the food is just top notch. And you can have wonderful things like a cheese board, um, there's salmon bruschetta, there's sandwiches, salads, soups, and flatbread pizzas. And you can sit outside, you can sit inside, it's all windows. It's really a And you don't even have to go to the museum, you can go eat there without paying musician, museum entry fee. Talk about room with a view. Mm -hmm. Talk about a room with a view. <laughs> yes, indeed. Thank you so much, Thanks. Bobby. And happy Mother's Day. Oh, thank okay. you. And if you're a vegetarian or even thinking about eating more leafy greens, WYS's Tom Gregory has got the festival for you this weekend. Here's Tom. Here in New Orleans, we love to eat and we love our festivals. And the folks at the Humane Society of Louisiana have combined both with their love of animals at NOLA Veggie Fest, happening this weekend at the Healing Center. 
New Orleans Veggie Fest is all about bringing together vendors and restaurants and having a plethora of, of education available for uh, our patrons. We've got Seed Restaurant, we've got Santa Fe Tapas who has been loyal supporter of Veggie Fest with their vegan brunches every Saturday. We've got Carmo Restaurant, which is a very popular uh, vegan friendly restaurant here. It's a virtual who's who in the New Orleans vegan world, including Breads on Oak and Three Potato Four. Hi, I'm Jahan Strauss with NOLA Veggie Fest and uh, Three Potato Four New Orleans, which is a um, San Francisco based franchise restaurant that's uh, vegan and gluten free. And I started this restaurant here in the New Orleans Broadmoor area. And we are here today featuring some of our foods. We're the first organic bakery in New Orleans. We do many vegan items and vegetarian items. A lot of them are traditional French items that we've turned into uh, vegan items that we have as an option, such as vegan croissants or vegan pan chocolat. Like all Louisiana festivals, Veggie Fest has plenty to eat. We have tons of free samples, we've got juices, and tons of vendors that you might be familiar with, like Field Roast and Tofurky, Coconut Bliss, We've got tons of great speakers here, authors promoting their books. We also have a lot of promotional tables that are basically here available for outreach information, free literature for people to take and ponder later at their own pace. NOLA Veggie Fest is not only about the food, but the life choices made by choosing what food we eat. I teach people about eating a plant-based diet to help reduce the comorbidities for diabetes, high blood pressure, high cholesterol. Um, I come to the New Orleans um, Veggie Fest because it promotes health and well-being, it promotes eating a healthy diet, it promotes um, animal welfare. So these are some of my designs, love animals go vegan, um, everyone ought to be vegan, uh, a bunch of vegan slogans, I'm vegan myself and then I found that being an artist it's a great way to share um, that ideal and the vision and the joys of being vegan with others. We've enjoyed now six years of success at New Orleans Veggie Fest and that has been largely in part to the New Orleans Healing Center which is this wonderful building that we're in right now and it's also the home of the New Orleans Food Co-op which has been a huge partner and we want to wish all the moms happy Mother's Day and thank you for sharing your Mother's Day at Veggie Fest. Going veggie for stepping out, I'm Tom Gregory. Actually, Tom is a vegetarian. The NOLA Veggie Fest will be held Saturday, and that's from 11 to 6, and Sunday from noon to 6 at the New Orleans Healing Center. You can go to NOLAVeggieFest.com for more information. Now, I'm so thrilled to be turning over to Rick and Chi Rick. I'm trying to think about this wonderful book. It's on, on so many levels. But basically, basketball coach turned provost in a major urban university, but there's a hurricane. Hmm, okay. <laughs> Weren't you provost of UNO? Didn't you help save you know among other folks involved too? But anyway, but so much more. I'll let you take it from there. Well, there are in the wake of flagship has uh, two interwoven narratives. It's a black comedy. I mean, I mean for the book to be funny. But in the 17th century, it's the story of the Wampanoag people who survived the first two genocides that the Puritans launched on Indian people. And uh, Massachusetts were wiped out in 1623 and then the Pequots in 1636. And then uh, the English turned on the Wampanoags in 1675. And so my narrator is the chief of that tribe, a sachem they called. And he is also, of course, dead because they lose this uh, battle. But as the, as the narrative there uh, e explains, they come very close to winning. It's quite an inspirational story in a certain way if you can be inspired by people who finally lose their lives and livelihood and everything else. The other part is the, the, the part that is set in the uh, town of, uh, in, in the state of Alcansia. And for those of you who, <laughs> who don't know, I can right here, and right here on my map here, He's you can map. see, I got a map here. <laughs> Alcansia is located exactly, there it is up on the screen. You see right there between Mississippi and Alabama? Oh, yeah. There, there it is. Oh, yeah. yeah, right there. It's a vulnerable state like the other states on the Gulf Coast because uh, its uh, biggest city, Choctaw, is hit by a major uh, hurricane. And a uh, former uh, basketball coach who turns around and finds himself, uh, he's the interim rector or president of the university, and he's got to lead the university back 
uh, from uh, being very badly damaged. Uh, not always with assistance, in fact very infrequently with the assistance of state officials in the capital city called in this book Mayflower. <laughs> so that the flagship university being that one, that hence being, the title. That being or? Alcansia State University. All right. <laughs> also sometimes referred to in the book as All Sports University <laughs> since there's a great deal more emphasis All on right. the sports achievements of the university than the, the academic ones. Ooh, this is your sixth novel yeah. and basketball and I know El Cholo Feeling passes, which um, yeah, was one of one of my favorites of, of the many of them. But uh, basketball seems to pop up a lot in your in your work. Why so, sir? Well, I was a basketball player as as a young man. I now have a mm -hmm. rod in my left leg uh, because of the damage I suffered from mm -hmm. that. Uh, and I love basketball. I'm a big fan. Um, and in, w my very first job out of college was coaching high school basketball. Hmm. So uh, yeah, I've written uh, about uh, basketball coaches a lot in my career. I think of uh, the fact that uh, John Irving always had a wrestler in his early books. Well, I've always had a basketball coach in mind. <laughs> but a sort of metaphor for life in terms of winning and losing. Winning and, and losing. All that, all that but, stuff. But what matters is playing the game well. <laughs> That's how you play the game. Very good. Well, I couldn't help but notice in the back cover, there's a quote from Richard Ford. Pretty impressive, too. He liked the book a yeah. lot. <laughs> Why don't you read that? Okay, yes, we can. I will. I think I'll, I will. Because it's pretty special. Barton has a lot of important human business on his mind in this exceptional novel. Race, history, his the South, hurricanes, laughter, love, and much more. And the wake of the flagship is wonderfully inventive and addicted to read. That's a really nice endorsement, That's nice. sir. Thank now, you, Richard, out there. Absolutely. But backing up to how long have you been at UNO? I came in 1979, so that makes 36 years. Wow. And I know you were Dean of Liberal Arts at one point, I was Dean too. of Liberal Arts at one point. I was Provost at one point. I was never acting President or Chancellor. So okay, but, this book is completely <laughs> fictional. Yeah, yeah right, <laughs> right, okay. But certainly your um, experiences after the storm, because I know you and Tim Ryan and Bobby DuPont, and the list is long, mm -hmm. of folks who tried to save the university after you now. And you all really came back up very quickly. We came, well, we, we we reopened after the storm uh, in October, uh, a incredible. fact that was not well reported around no. the city or the country. We were very proud of that. So we were able to save a fall semester, and uh, we then were back at two-thirds strength uh, in January. Mm -hmm. uh, since then, uh, state budget cuts have hurt University of New Orleans very, very badly. And that story's not been terribly well reported either. And with this state budget uh, where it is right now, with a $1.6 million, uh, the, all, all of public higher education is going to be gravely and negatively changed. Should be really be worried. So yeah. this book doesn't address any of that directly, but mm -hmm. it's but it's a book that is sensitive to the importance of public higher education across the country. In New Orleans, UNO has been critical to the creation of a middle class in this community, and we cannot afford to let this place be damaged. Absolutely. And you, for more information about your other books as well, you have a website? FrederickBarton.com. Okay. You can go right there. There's a button where if you actually want to buy a book, you can just press that You can that do button. that, too. And we also you have an upcoming event we'll talk about a little later. Okay, but great thank, to hear. Have thank you, here. Peg. And now, though, it is time for our weekly artist spotlight. Tonight, we are featuring works from two different exhibits. The first is Fabric Art, titled Tree of Life by Jeannie Detweiler. A native New Orleanian, Detweiler is an art teacher in the Jefferson Parish Public School System. She is one of the artists included in the fabric-themed group art show, String Along, opening tomorrow evening with a reception at Antenna Gallery that's on the second floor of the Pe Press Street building on St. Claude Avenue. On view through June 7th, visit pressstreet.org slash stringalong <laughs> slash <laughs> for more information. The next pieces are collaborations between photographers Golden G. Richard III and Elsa Hahn. And this is, <laughs> wow, Rob Zombie, okay? And we also have The Barge to Hell, a crowd shot at the heavy metal cruise during a behemoth band performance on the top deck. The two met when Han interviewed Richard for his first, her rather, her first cookbook, You Are Where You Eat, which is really well done, in 2005. They have a fine arts partnership, an online photo documentary publication, and three children together, okay? <laughs> so their exhibit, Blood 
blood, sweat, and hair opens <laughs> with a reception tomorrow evening at Treo Bar and Art Gallery. That's at Tulane Avenue and Scott Street. It will be on view through May 23rd. Visit treonola.com for more information on that. And now we turn to Miss Deb. Hello, hello. Tell Hi. us about your brand new book. And it's really a companion book to a previous yes. one, too. Let's yes. hear more. Well, um, as you know, the first book on historic churches through uh, Greater New Orleans, everybody really enjoyed Hallowed it. Hallowed Halls. Hall it, it's called Hallowed Halls of Greater uh -huh. New Orleans, yes. <laughs> uh -huh. And everybody enjoyed it so much, I decided to go to a second book, only I wanted to include cemeteries, historic cemeteries, because there's so many in New Orleans. But in my travels as a travel writer, I also found some very historic cemeteries in St. Francisville and the Feliciana parishes, East Feliciana parishes, from uh, plantation monarchs to civil here, but also civil in the war city heroes. too. Jesuit Church yes. is one of my favorite churches. Jesuit Church, and here's uh, St. Francisville. Right. Uh -huh. The churches themselves um, speak so much about the history of New Orleans, and um, the, the voodoo is ceremonies. And that's St. Louis number three. So you're in the region, really. You're in the area. Yes. Good field trip ideas. Yes. Huh? Matter of fact, people are buying the book for what I call a historic a trail of history and mystery. Mm -hmm. And it's a historic trail where you can go from New Orleans to some of the exquisite churches, um, and even including Our Lady of Guadalupe, which is, um, you know, what was right once there. called the Mortuary Chapel, the Funeral Church, mm -hmm. has a lot of history on the um, yellow fever epidemics. And then you can go to the cemeteries, and then you can start going through Point Capi Parish, the Florida parishes, go to the back roads, see some of the church chapels and the churchyards there on the River Road. and. All also, um, uh, East Feliciana and uh, Jack yeah. Jackson, Clinton, and and you took the photos as well, didn't yes, you? Yes, I'm a photographer, Very good. and yeah. uh, I do a lot of uh, sharing on social media, and I have quite a few fans that love the photographs, and they're all begging for another book. Oh, well, that sounds good. <laughs> now so, you've got um, an event coming up at Maple Street too. Um, yes, not this week, but next. Yes, right? next Saturday, mm -hmm. the 16th, from mm -hmm. 11 to 1, and I'm very excited. It's going to be my first time at Maple Street Bookshop. What a precious little bookshop that Isn't is. Isn't it? Yeah, and one of the oldest here. Yes, uh, it is. Yeah. And um, it's actually, they called me and said, we have to have your book. You know, <laughs> Isn't that nice yes. to, be, to be wanted? <laughs> uh, and you also have a summer lecture coming up at the end of the month, huh? Yes. Um, I got involved with Save Our Cemeteries, naturally, in the um, research of the book, um, mm -hmm. Louisiana Sacred Places. and. They, I learned they had some interesting lectures. Uh, I just saw one on Holt Cemetery, which is going to be in my next book. Mm -hmm. And as I started talking to them and showed them the book, they like, oh, you could be in our next summer's lecture series. So I will be. That's the end of the month, um, well, great. May 30th. And um, for more information, they can go to you. Everybody can go to your website, too? Yes, my web website is JebraBurst.com. You can get um, autographed. Uh, books from there, both of them, or now both of them are on Amazon and they are available as ebooks as well. One of the things I think is such an honor is when you consider one of your mentors to be Anne Rice. You yes, know that, yes, you know she her did the foreword of the first book and she gave wow. me a testimonial on this book, and I have quite a few of Anne's followers following me. She is such a mentor and such a treasure for authors and literary and um, people with literary endeavors. She is. Thank mm -hmm. you so much for being here. Yeah. Glad you're here. And New Orleans Magazine's quiz queen, Julia Street, has a question for us. Last time, Joel Gowden gave us the names of the band leaders for the Coral Reefer Band and the barbecue swingers, Jimmy Buffett and Kermit Ruffins. We were in our jazz fest mode last <laughs> week, of course. Now, tonight's question. Name two films that Brad Pitt starred in, hmm, that were primarily shot in New Orleans, hmm. Okay, <laughs> email your answers to stepanout at wys.org. Our prizes, New Orleans music composer, pianist Kevin George's CD, Subtle Changes, available through iTunes and CD Baby. 
TV.com. A gift certificate for two, courtesy of Vianne's Tea House in Old Mandeville, offering their culinary and gourmet tea experience. And don't forget about their Mother's Day tea this Sunday. And then tonight we have an apron, aw, as worn by WYS staffer Aislinn Hinyup, with the message, I love Lucy. <laughs> <laughs> and the digital, I love gardening very much. <laughs> <laughs> from our friends at wearablevegetables.com. Where else, right? And you can visit WYS.org for our online calendar to see our lineup of events, including the opening reception for the Historic New Orleans Collections exhibit about the life and career of UEP Long. That's next Wednesday. And concerts in the court yet next Friday with Benu Gibson, both at the HNOC on Royal Street. You can also link to our WYS YouTube channel to visit and view our program on our home page. But now it's time for Mr. Allen. Yes, want everybody to know that the Sydney and Walda Best Off Sculpture Garden has been magically transformed into Sherwood Forest. <laughs> and that's because the NOLA Project is weaving its theatrical magic in presenting Robin Hood Thief Brigand. And that'll be on right now in the Sculpture Garden. Uh, James Bartell is uh, the, of course, lead is Robin Hood. He plays the role of the outlaw. And uh, it's his practice generally to rob from the rich and give to the poor. But this particular play begs the question, what happens when a literal king's ransom is captured by the Merry Men and Robin Hood? What do they do? Well, Jared Gore and Becca Chapman are playing the roles of Little John and Alan Adale, respectively. I love that name. Uh, anyway, they have to deal with the consequences. Andrew Vaught has written a really beautifully crafted, uh, cleverly written script, and it's directed uh, uh, quite well by Bo Bratcher. Uh, it expands on the role of Eleanor of Aquitaine, who in the later Legends of Robin Hood is the uh, mother of both King Richard and uh, Prince John, or King John, as he usurps the throne. Uh, again, Trina Beck plays the role of Eleanor, and on the role of uh, Marion, we have Caitlin McQuinn, who plays Marion of Loxley. So you've got Robin Hood, his band of merry men, and you've got the king, played by Alex Martinez Wallace. He's wonderful. He's delicious in the role. He enlists three henchmen, if you will, much like Jan Three Stooges. There they are, Keith Clavery, Nicholas Stevens, and Price Provenzano. They help to try to capture Robin. Natalie Boyd, as Little John's wife Scarlet, is also quite impressive. And Alec Barnes, as the ruffian Barg, is quite a, uh, a, a laughable item in the cast. Jake Bartouche, as the Sheriff of Nottingham, is also very funny. Um, again, Robin Hood... Thief Brigand has a wonderful ending. I recommend it highly for children and adults. Bring your chairs, bring your blankets, have a good time in the Sculpture Garden. Again, it plays on Thursdays, uh, Fridays, and Sunday nights. It will not be playing this particular Sunday at 7, as is the normal consequence, because they have a uh, musical offering by none other than Tanya Cannon Boyd in the Botanical Gardens, much like uh, another lady singer is going to have one at Audubon Park, uh, uh, which Peggy will tell you about so later. later <laughs> it's going to be... It's going to be later on, so so I, yeah, so so they're going to be at eight o'clock. So okay. keep that in mind. Robin Hood, Thief Brigand, and while we're talking about the incredible Nola Project players, keep in mind they've just announced season eleven, and that's going to enjoy some plays like Marie Antoinette, Shakespeare's The Winter Tale uh, in the New Orleans Museum of Arts Grand Hall, and of course the new play by Peter McElliot uh, on Don Quixote should be wonderful. That'll be in the uh, Sculpture Garden next year. Now, as to uh, other plays that are on right now, I would like everybody to know about one that's on. At at the Old Marquet, formerly the Shadow Box. This is, of course, Antigone. Sophocles wrote the Theban uh, cycle that started with Oedipus Rex and ended with Antigone. It's a tragedy that involves, of course, the daughter of uh, Oedipus, and uh, it's an unusual all-female cast. It employs the convention of a Greek chorus, and all the cast members are part of that Greek chorus. Um, and there also is a theme of Earth that's employed, the, uh, the idea of connecting to nature and connecting to uh, having a proper burial for one of her brothers. Uh, this is one dirty play, I have to tell you that, <laughs> <laughs> but it's an ensemble uh -oh. cast. It, it, is, it is really a, a, a wonderfully uh, a crafted play. Joanna Russo is the director. I saw it last night. I really would like to tell everybody to go. It has no intermission. It's about an hour and a half long. Uh, again, a new translation by Paul Woodruff really makes it very interesting. Antigone plays at the Old Marquet Theater. Um, uh, again, you could call it Antigone or maybe 
soils well that ends well. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> that's in the shadow box. Now, this coming Wednesday night, want to remind everybody, uh, another favorite of mine, of course, is opera. And true opera stars who are husband and wife, they're touring, and that's going to be Michael Spires and Tara Stafford. They have dedicated themselves to uh, bringing back the old MGM musical starring Mario Lanza and Catherine Grayson. Yeah. Again, uh, Spires will delight the crowd at St. Mary's Church, and his wife, Tara, uh, who is an amazing coloratura soprano, the two of them, you know, will join together, and I'm certain they're going to be doing some solo arias as well as uh, uh, some duets, which should be wonderful. But that's such a deal. It's free. It's free. And the only thing they ask is that you make a donation to the Bishop Perry Fund there. Uh, you the know, homeless. whatever whatever yeah. your heart feels we like. Again, ask. this is organized by George Dansker, who's such a, a maven on operas, and it should be a wonderful night. And again, I know we, you would mentioned another uh, 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 historic New Orleans collection is having a, uh, an item that night, too, that might conflict with it, but I would recommend this very highly. You might be able to go to both if you, yeah, if you play your cards sure. right. And a quick note that the miracle worker, the play about the relationship between Helen Keller and Annie Sullivan, uh, that was supposed to be opening this weekend at the Bayou Playhouse in Lockport, that's been pushed back a week due to some filming production schedule changes with the Matthew McConaughey film. Oh. We had some bad weather, if you remember, a, a couple weeks ago. Mm. So uh, it's going to open next week instead. But what's really interesting about that, Lucy Faust is playing the role of Annie Sullivan. She is the actual great, great niece of Helen Keller. So they were oh. able to actually use some of the letters that Helen Keller had written written, uh, at least Annie wow. Sullivan had written okay. to Helen Keller, etc. So they've got some wonderful historical right. background. So keep that in mind as well. And um, we'll, we'll talk about some more later. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you. And now, though, it's time for our picks. Deb. Yes, Once I'll again. be at um, Maple Street uh -huh. at um, May 16th from 11 to 1, Save Our Cemeteries on May 30th. Okay, great. And of course, DebraBurst.com too, right? Okay. okay. Poppy. Tuesday night, wonderful, wonderful. Jill Benson's book, Kit Wall's book, New Orleans Classic <laughs> Creole Recipes and Fun, Funky, and Fabulous. They're going to be at the Hubble Library Author Night, and then that is always a fun, fun event. All right. Rick. Two new books, uh, Friendswood by my friend Renee Steinke about people living on a toxic, uh, we a toxic uh, waste site Oof. in uh, the area of Houston. Mm -hmm. And my former student, Greg uh, Alexander, The Holy Mark about a pedophile priest. And East Jefferson Library in June. In June. Okay, great. That's okay. to see me. Yeah, to come see you. Uh, okay. to come yeah. see you. Right, right. Don't forget they're back. Gary Rucker, Rob Pavlovich, uh, Kayla Harrington, and Kelly Fushi reprised their 2011 <laughs> roles in Dirty Rotten Scoundrels opening this weekend at Rivertown Theaters. We'll have the review next week. Okay. And don't forget, Dark Side of the Moon, I'll see you there at the LPO, uh, the Louisiana Philharmonic Orchestra's uh, rendition next Friday night. Pink Floyd, all right. And the New Orleans Ballet Association, they will be hosting the Lamone Dance Company. That's tomorrow evening with a performance at 8 p.m. at the Mahalia Jackson Theater. Tickets may be purchased, of course, through their website. Irma Thomas returns to the Audubon Zoo on Sunday for the annual Mother's Day celebration where she is headlined for over three decades. Mothers get in free all day. Live music begins at 11 a.m. and Irma Thomas and her band perform at 2.30. I've been to that. It's so much fun. Looking ahead, okay, next Friday, the New Orleans chapter of the English Speaking Union presents a lecture, Greed, Lust, and Murder, mm -hmm. King Henry VIII, the Tudor Court, and how it changed England forever. And the lecture will be by Kurt D. Camillo, and it takes place at 6.30 p.m. at 6330 St. Charles Avenue with a champagne reception to follow. Cost is $35 for members and $45 for non-members. And don't forget the WYS sneak peek and tasting of New Orleans cooking with Kevin Belton coming up. That's next week, next Saturday, May 16th. You can visit our website for more information on that. Now we leave you with the Limone Dance Company performing Missa Brevis. Thank you all so much. Thanks for watching. Good night.